All right, ranking member of the House Intelligence Committee, Congressman Devin Nunes, is now preparing to send eight criminal referrals to the Attorney General, William Barr, over the alleged misconduct during the Trump-Russia investigation. Also, just breaking now, Devin Nunes has filed a $150 million lawsuit against McClatchy News and alleging conspiracy to derail the Clinton-Russia probes. Congressman joins us now at the very latest. Let's start with your lawsuit. Wasn't this the same McClatchy that said that Michael Cohn was in Prague? When Michael, well, I knew where Michael Cohn was. His son is a great athlete. His son, he was in Los Angeles with his son. Uh, well, let's just say showing off his son's great talent. Ex yeah, he they, never was in Prague. And they doubled down on stupid. But that's only yeah, one they did that twice, Sean. So they had dozens and dozens of stories. So a couple of reporters there were the biggest uh, perpetuators of the Russia hoax. Uh, and don't forget, they also targeted the National Rifle Association. They targeted a lawyer, uh, Cleta Mitchell. So all of this was done uh, in concert while they were slandering and attacking me and defaming me, attacking Republicans. And the whole time they were getting this information from someone. And so part of the lawsuit here is not only that you know, they need to retract everything that they did against me, but they also need to come clean with the American people, retract all of their fake news stories. And so this is part of the broader cleanup. So remember a few weeks ago, I, I filed against Twitter that they're, they're censoring conservatives. Uh, McClatchy is one of the biggest, uh, the worst offenders of this, but we're coming after the rest of them. I think people are just beginning to wake up now that I'm serious, I'm coming to clean up all of the mess. So if you're out there and you lied and you defamed, uh, we're going to come after you. Well, I would add to the list, you know, the cowardly shift. You know, I've offered him an hour on this show. And well, I have a well, dossier on shift. I can't, I can't, sue, I can't sue him. Uh, but, I have, uh, I have but him I, and his I own words them. documented. I offered him three hours on radio and one hour here. I don't, know why. I don't know why he doesn't take it up, but, but he doesn't want to take I guess he's afraid. Uh, I got a tape of him colluding with a Russian, or somebody That's believed right. to be a Russian, that had compromising materials and naked pictures of Trump. And, you know, he was hyperventilating on the phone call, didn't know he was being, it was a hoax. Um, and don't forget, even after that, the staff, the Democratic staff followed up. So the media ignored, that's another thing that they ignored. So there's two things that, that happened in this, right? You had fake news stories that were very slanderous that have got to be wiped away and cleaned off the internet. And at the same time, you had that they would take these stories and ignore them, like the fact that you had staffers here that were attempting to collude with Russians, Democratic staffers colluding with Russians, trying to get information on Donald Trump. I mean, that really happened, and it's went you know, largely unreported, except by well, uh, you know, Devin, very few in the conservative media. And we also had the Hillary bought and paid for dossier. Real right, Russian collusion paid for to influence the election. Now we've got, the, we've got evidence. Ukraine, the Ukrainian officials on them with evidence and a tape. Joe Biden bragging they fired him. Uh, I don't have a lot of time. I want to get to the criminal referral issue. Uh, mm -hmm. I know you begin with eight, but there might be more. What can you tell us and how soon? Yeah, so the, simply put, there's five that are straightforward. So five on lying, leaking, obstructing Congress. Those are five, five specific names. There are three. One is a global leak uh, uh, referral. So remember, there's been, I mean, everybody knows about general, the leak between General Flynn and the Russian ambassador. We don't know that that's ever been investigated, but there's about a dozen others. So we're referring all of those to make sure that they get the proper sunlight put on them and transparency so that they can be followed up on. The other two, I think, are more difficult that, that are involve conspiracy. Uh, I think there were a bunch of people who wanted to be the next Watergate deep throat within the FBI and DOJ, and they were leaking, and they were proud to do it, and they were all conspiring together, and that's what we're asking the DOJ to look into. If we don't hold them accountable for this abuse of power, this corruption, at the highest levels to, uh, to first influence and help one candidate over another, and then, and then literally upend the election of the American people, it will happen again and again. We'll lose the republic. Holding them accountable is key. Thank you, Congressman. Our first guest tonight to take up the long overdue efforts to uncover the collusion between the radical Dems and the Russians, the discredited phony Trump dossier used by the FBI and Justice Department to obtain FISA warrants and other efforts to undermine, to undercut, to subvert this president. Joining us tonight, Judicial Watch President 
Tom Fenton. Tom, great to have you with us. Let's you. let's start with Devin Nunez's uh, call to uh, uh, to make uh, eight referrals. Five of them he described as straightforward, uh, but it could be the beginning of actual actual uh, investigation into the investigators in a meaningful way. Your thoughts? Well, eight is a good start. Uh, it's one of the reasons the Mueller operation continued well over a year past its uh, reasonable conclusion, which was over a year ago where they right. knew there was no Russia collusion. By continuing to operate, it pro essentially protected uh, the investigators from being investigated and those involved mm -hmm. in setting up the Mueller operation from being seriously reviewed by the Justice Department. Now that's gone. And so uh, I hope Lindsey Graham is right about the Attorney General, uh, that he's going to look to see what went on and investigate and prosecute if necessary. And, and Nunez's mm -hmm. uh, specific referrals will be useful in that regard. There, there are two, th two thoughts that occur I as you were speaking. And one is that Devin Nunez has taken a very long time to reach this point himself. Uh, he's done many good things, but uh, uh, he's not done many with alacrity, uh, and, and that's unfortunate. Uh, deal first with that uh, impression. Well, Judicial Watch has never looked to Congress for leadership, and uh, Nunes <laughs> performed some heroic work and work that will go down in history in terms of confronting, exposing a deep state at great personal and political cost to himself. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, the leadership has got to come uh, from the Justice Department in terms of cleaning house, and that comes from the pressure from the president, who ought to exercise it as directly as he's able, mm -hmm. uh, and the American people, because uh, Congress, at least on the House side, isn't going to pressure the Justice Department uh, to clean house. And I just hope Attorney General Barr has enough personal integrity uh, to understand that the Justice Department has been a rogue agency for the last several years, involved in a coup effort to overthrow the president. And if he takes it that seriously, uh, as like I said, Devin Nunes's eight uh, referrals will be just the start. Uh, and I take your point. Um, William Barr, let me share with you my impression of the man to this point. Uh, that is, he is not only a serious uh, but uh, a deep thinking uh, attorney general, uh, a man of principle, uh, and I would be surprised if there is any indication, uh, no matter how, uh, how small, uh, in, con in contrary uh, uh, evidence to that. Uh, to that issue, I would tell, the, if I were, uh, you know, had the opportunity to tell this Attorney General anything, take your time, sir, do exactly as you, uh, as you wish, because every voice you're hearing right now is, is, amounts to a clamor. Uh, whether it be uh, you know, the Democrats, the radical Dems in Congress, whether it uh, the, the 2020 hopefuls of the Democratic Party, the blather and the nonsense go on. Uh, even the chair of the Judiciary Committee in the Senate, Senator Lindsey Graham, two months in, he's done nothing. Uh, but I, I, I mean, it must seem like a cacophony to bar right now. Uh, a, a bunch of braying jackasses in the middle of the swamp trying to tell him how to do his job. Well, he has to follow the law, and that's evidently what he's doing with respect to grand jury material. I just hope he's not the cautious lawyer that most Republicans typically are in these circumstances. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't want to make waves. They don't want to take on the deep state. They don't want to do anything to make Hillary Clinton upset. Uh, the core, uh, one, of the, one of the key figures behind this effort to overthrow the president, and one of the reasons there was this effort was to distract uh, from her misconduct sure. and the failure to prosecute. Is Attorney General Barr going to take on Hillary Clinton? That's a big test as well. well yeah. uh, you know, and I will wager I, with you, Tom, uh, and this is purely a, an impression. Uh, I believe he will take on whatever uh, is necessary to make certain this republic survives. Uh, and that this, uh, this injustice done the president is righted. That's my bet. And, and I, I, I hope that's the case. We'll do our work in the meantime. You bet. Uh, but, as, but getting back but got, to the DHS we, firing, the president's got to take the leadership here and require the Justice Department to uphold the rule of law, expect A.G. Barr will do the right thing, but tell him to do the right thing just in case.
Tonight, some are reminded of 2013 when the IRS official Lois Lerner revealed that the agency was targeting conservative groups seeking tax-exempt status. As House Democrats ramp up their demands to see President Trump's tax returns, Republicans say this, quote, weaponization of the IRS is happening again. Earlier, I spoke with one of those Republicans, Senator Chuck Grassley, chairman of the House Finance Committee. Let's start with this request for the president's tax returns and whether or not you think there is a politicalization or a weaponization, as these words um, are thrown around so much lately, in that request. Absolutely. Uh, LBJ, Nixon uh, used uh, IRS for, against their political enemies. That's why in 1976 we passed a law saying that your tax returns are uh, are private, uh, you, you, you can't show them to anybody else. So I see this as an illegitimate use of the tax returns. It's very legitimate to use them for legislative purposes. I have sometimes uh, seen uh, people's tax returns with the name redacted, so you don't know who it is, but in the pursuit of maybe closing a loophole or something like that, you need information to write legislation. This isn't what the House is about. This is about politicizing Trump and going after him, and that's entirely wrong. It's a misuse of congressional oversight. It's a misuse of uh, the chairman, uh, and I'm a chairman that can ask yeah. for it uh, well, to you, use it. What do you say, Senator, though, to those who say, you know, every president, going back to Richard Nixon, has released their tax returns? We know the president said during the 2016 election cycle that he would, and then he did not. And do you believe that someone is under audit for this many years? And if so, I mean, if the IRS has been auditing him for all these years, I guess there's also a conclusion that you could to draw from that, um, that, that, that apparently they haven't found anything, or I would imagine they would have gone after him. Well, of course. Now, every president that's done it since Nixon's, it's voluntary. If the president wants to do this voluntarily, that's his decision. But remember, this was an issue in the election of 2016. It didn't keep him from being elected because he didn't release his tax returns, uh, and he hasn't done it since. He says when he, they are released, he wants it to be fully audited so that he knows what he, uh, the tax that he files, uh, they're right or wrong. And uh, and so consequently, uh, it's up, it's up to him. But uh, you can't use the power of being chairman of a committee. I don't feel I can uh, to politicize the same way Nixon did to go after his political enemies, and they obviously consider Trump a political enemy. All right, let, let me ask you about a letter that you sent uh, to the Attorney General, William Barr, about concerns that you had over emails that were part of the Mueller investigation. What are the concerns that you have with regard to some of the people who were investigated, and what are you, what are you digging for here? What, do, what are you hoping that you're going to learn through this process of this letter to Bill Barr? Well, he, here's where we are on that, and I gave a speech on this just lately on the Senate floor. Uh, it, it deals with uh, people going after the Mueller report uh, and wanting to see it fully, uh, not uh, in, in a non-redacted version, and they seem to be uh, religiously pursuing that at the very same time that a lot of us have been pursuing things that ought to be fully investigated, uh, that were similar uh, presumed violations of laws. If you want to investigate something fully and have all the documents, doesn't it apply to all sorts of political interference uh, in the operation of the Justice Department and the politicization of the CIA uh, that it ought to be used for You, you want to investigate the origins of the investigation and you want to make sure that that, that is no. also happening when there's a request for full disclosure. It seems like both sides just only want what, you know, what they're interested in, but I think you know, it, 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 both sides should um, have the transparency that, that you're seeking in order to really figure out what happened on all sides of this equation. Um, before I let you go, sir, I just want to get your reaction to the changes that happened today at DHS. Um, and do you think it is right that, that Kirsten Nielsen, the uh, head of the Homeland Security Department, is now moving on? I'm surprised that concerning what the president said last October, November about her, about ready to fire, and everything seemed to have gone smoothly since then. 
Uh, I'm very surprised. Uh, but the president has a right to have whoever he wants, and the acting person is very well qualified. I'm worried about what I have seen further down in the bureaucracy, like in the Immigration Service, where I know a Director Cisna of that, and I know his policy uh, director there, uh, because uh, the policy director, Kathy, worked for me for 17 years. Uh, Cisna was on my staff as a detailee for three years working with Kathy. They are now the policy people down there that give an intellectual and a policy basis for exactly the uh, policies that the president wants in immigration. And it would be f uh, a real mistake if they go that far down into the bureaucracy to fire good people like that that I've worked with for 17 years. All right, Senator Grassley, thank you very much. Good to see you tonight as always, sir. Thanks thank for being you. here.